Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I don't have much of an introduction for this video, partially because I forgot all about it, and secondly because it was a pain in the ass to do, even though I kind of did it half-ass. But basically, here's my library tour. All right, so my first overview, my first shelf overview, is basically my Harry Potter shelf. I've got a bunch of different editions. I've got other fantasy series, other series and books from my childhood, like Nancy Drew and the Twilight series. I've got Clive Barker's Aberat, which I absolutely love. And yeah, like I said, a lot of Harry Potter editions. Uh, up top here, I've got some like collectibles, memorabilia. I've got a time turner, some figurines, a Deathly Hollows necklace. Um, some bookmarks. I've got a map of the six duchies signed by Robin Hub, and I've got some fits in the full artwork as well. The one item on the shelf that I want to show is my Japanese edition of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, my friend actually studied in Japan over a summer while getting her PhD, um, and she grabbed me a copy of the Prisoner of Azkaban because that one is my favorite, and I really like having it. In my collection, I think it's a really cool addition. This next shelf isn't too special. Uh, it's kind of like an overflow of paperbacks and then just my Book of the Month Club books. Down at the bottom, I've got some fantasy books and series and I've got some mystery books and series. Um, but other than that, this is kind of like my overflow shelf slash Book of the Month. Um, there's a plunger there for uh, fantasy football trophy. Don't don't mind that. All right, this next shelf you can see part of my lighting <laughs> um, is mostly true crime nonfiction. I've got a couple old cameras on here, um, which I collect. I've got book sleeves here. Um, let's see some true crime. Um, down here, past this cord, <laughs> I've got some of my textbooks. I have a degree in anthropology with a focus on biological anthropology. Um, and then so some more nonfiction. And then down here, I've got some uh, folklore, Grimm's fairy tales. And then down here, I have a Harvard's classics uh, collection. They're used, so they're pretty kind of beat up a little bit, but um, my husband actually found these when he was on a trip out of town, like in an antique store or something, and he thought they looked cool, so he snagged them for me. I've got a few books on the fireplace mantle. I've got some Clive Barker artwork. There's a glare, but that's from the Aberat series that I showed you earlier. Um, I've got some old books here. And then I've got this little leather library collection um, that's very delicate and falling apart, but it belonged to my great grandparents and it's just got like selected poems and essays and works. Um, and then down here, we have the New England Tragedies by Longfellow. Um, this tells the story of Giles Corey and some other um, things of that during the Salem Witch Trials. Um, and then we have The Uninvited by Dorothy McArdle. This was a movie that I watched so many times with my grandmother growing up, and this is a very beat up copy, but I found it at a uh, book outlet, not book outlet, what is that place called? A half price books massive sale that they were having. So yes, it's super beat up, um, but I love having this copy in this edition and it brings back good memories. All right, this next shelf is a bunch of classics, um, modern classics, things of that sort. Um, as you can see, I have this classics sign. Uh, if you guys remember Borders, when they went out of business, they were throwing a bunch of that stuff out and someone snagged it and gave it to me. So that's really awesome. I've yet to hang it. It's been sitting in this corner forever. Um, but up top here, I've got some Charles Dickens, really old books. Uh, I've got my Wuthering Heights slash Bronte Sisters shelf. I have a whole video on my Wuthering Heights collection. It has been added to since I made that video, but I really liked making that video. Talked about why I like the book 
and showed off my collection. Um, the next shelf down is my Thomas Hardy slash Daphne du Maurier shelf. Um, I love Thomas Hardy, Tess of the Derbyvilles, and Jude the Obscure are my favorites. Um, when it comes to Daphne du Maurier, I love Rebecca. I really like Jamaica Inn. I like my cousin Rachel. Um, yeah, uh, one I'll show you. I collect really old editions, so this one's a lot of fun. And then I have a lot of her work with like the sprayed edges. Um, I just find those at Hughes bookstores. Uh, down here, I've got some more classics and modern classics. Again, a lot of these are just me finding them at used bookstores and book sales and Goodwill and that sort of thing. And then continuing down, we've got more classics. Um, I have also my Hawthorne collection. I've got a few copies of The Scarlet Letter. I really like that book. I like The House of the Seven Gables. Um, and then down below, some more kind of random books, but mostly classics and plays. Um, my Hemingway collection, my King Arthur collection, and my Nabokov. Um, I've got Lolita down there, but then I also have another edition higher up. Um, got an illustrated edition of The Odyssey, and I think that's all. The thing about this shelf is it's really hard to pull everything off that I want to um, and show you guys. There's just, it's just a lot. So hopefully this overview helps. Um, so as you can see, I've got like Animal Farm by George Orwell in 1984. And then I also have like a more modern copy. Um, like I will read these and just keep these um as you know cool collectibles so now we're gonna start in on these shelves that you guys see like all the time in my videos and a lot of my live shows and stuff um i'm gonna start at the very top i've got some horror collections like poe lovecraft honey dreadfuls uh, i've got some old cameras part of the dark tower series and this right here is actually a collection of edgar Allan poe's works all of these uh written or published in 1904. My husband got those for me as a gift one year. Um, and then I think I'll just work my way down this way. Um, I've got what I have of the Stephen King Rainbow Hotter editions. Um, I started collecting them and then it was kind of like a pain and expensive. So I just find that, you know, as I come across them, I'll get them. Um, I've got multiple copies of the Green Mile I found one with the box set after purchasing these ones on eBay. I found these at Goodwill. Um, I've got the hardcover of the Bachman books, just no dust jacket. And then I've got some hardcover Stephen King books. Um, if you're new to my channel, it is my favorite. I love the dark half, Pet Cemetery. I like most of his stuff, um, but I am trying to collect all the hardcovers. And um, just because it's so hard to choose what editions I want to purchase and collect that I'm just going with original hardcovers. Um, so down here, I've got like another shelf of classics, horror classics, basically. Um, and then down below, I've got some more horror, um, more recently published horror. I've got some manga. Um, yeah, so this is all horror, all Stephen King. And then moving over, we have more horror. Um, so I've got this uh, old copy of Jaws, which I love. Um, I've got some more um, modern horror as well. Also a republishing of The Uninvited, which I was showing you earlier. Uh, Nosferatu by Joe Hill, love this. Love Horns. Um, and then I've got some more, uh, I guess, older horror. I've got The Bad Seed, Amityville Horror, uh, The Exorcist, and then some um, indie published books. And then down below, I have my Grady Hendrix books. Uh, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Saying Vampires is one of my favorite books of all time. Along with We Have Always Lived in the Castle, 
which I have a whole reading vlog on. Um, I've got this collection, which is a lot of fun and I feel like not enough people talk about it, but it's a collection of horror stories. And if you're not new to my channel, you know that I am in love with Ray Bradbury. Um, so I've got the Halloween tree. This is a signed edition and I've got Something Wicked This Way Comes, multiple editions of that. Um, the prized possession here is my folio society edition of something wicked this way comes my husband got this for me for christmas one year it is absolutely beautiful i will put in a little like flip through because i am obsessed with it like i said my husband got this for me for christmas um one year maybe it was last year actually um it is so absolutely beautiful i love the illustrations i love the bright yellow i mean it is it is perfect it fits it so well i love the slip case it's just it's my prized possession and um if you want to read along with me in september on my discord we are reading this book so uh i'm really really excited for it and continuing down we're back into stephen king um, I've got my Dark Tower series, my Hard Case, uh, crime books. Uh, I've got my Sanderson sisters, who I love. Um, I've got a copy of Cycle of the Werewolf, which I think is one of his best books. I love the format of it. I just love the story in general. Um, and down below here, I've got some mass market paperbacks, just some originals. I'm working on getting my editions of different seasons. I've got this beautiful edition of it, even though it is so banged up. It was free though, so um, this was the edition that I originally read in like grade school when I first read King. Um, and then I have this beautiful edition of The Dark Half. I love how like it's birds, but it also like looks at like a face real quick. <laughs> um, I think The Dark Half is totally underrated. You should read it if you haven't. Um, and then down below, more Stephen King. I've got um, some double day editions of Carrie and Night Shift. Um, and then I've got Don's Macabre. Uh, I love this cover, so cool. Um, and then the big um, Scribner edition of It, which this is the one that like I um, read and annotate. And of course, like I don't see any annotations now. <laughs> uh, there's some highlights and stuff in there. Um, and then his work with Richard Chismar. Um, and also another one that I think is underrated, uh, The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. This is one of my favorites. Um, I, if you haven't read this or if you've got a kid who wants to read King, I recommend starting here. Right, and then below there we start getting into my mystery series or just favorite mysteries in general. Tana French is one of my favorite authors of all time. I love her Dublin Murder Squad series. The Likeness is one of my favorite books ever. I've got Riley Sager, Kaz Freer, Laura McHugh. Um, a lot of these or all of these are my favorite mystery authors. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you've heard me talk about these books a lot on my channel but they've got a special little place all together all right back up to the top more of my edgar Allan poe collection a lot of these are for my from my husband i have a graphic novel i've got these special raven editions um that are super old either 19 or 1800s i can't remember um and then i've got like the barnes and noble leather bound leather bound um and then just yeah, just different collections and then like a book about Poe. Below that, I have some hardcover horror. Um, I love these Alfred Hitchcock books that I found. Um, Boy's Life is absolutely amazing. Love this book as well as uh, Summer of Night and Rewrite Upon Sticks. We've got a lot of five-star reads right here. Through the Woods is one of my favorite graphic novels. It's a collection of short stories. I reread it every Halloween basically. Um, then I've got some of the Penguin Horror editions. I've got 
other copies of Boy's Life and Summer of Nights. I've got a collection of short stories, ghost stories compiled by Roald Dahl, and then The Woman in Black. Um, that's basically it for the horror stuff. And moving down here, we're getting into my queen, Robin Hobb, which you all <laughs> know about, I'm sure. Um, I'm not going to pull these out. These are my Folio Society editions of the Farseer Trilogy. And I have a whole video unboxing these because I was so excited for them. And then I have the 20th anniversary editions of the Farseer Trilogy. I have, these two are signed. I'm sure you've seen them in halls. And then we go into the collection of short stories that she wrote under Megan Lindholm and Robin Hobb. Some of these short stories fit in with the realm of the elderlings. Um, and then we've got this short novella, The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince, which is like some history into a story of within the Realm of the Elderlings series, basically. And so this starts off the Realm of the Elderlings series, and we go all the way through, through here. Um, and then I have a few more of her books. This is a different series. Um, I don't like it as much, but it's still really great. Um, if you've seen some videos of mine earlier this year, I got Wizard of the Pigeons and it was kind of a disappointment, but I'm glad to support her and have it on my shelf. Um, some more fantasy. Black Sun by Rebecca Roan Horse. Absolutely beautiful, an amazing book. I cannot wait for the next in the series. I'll be rereading this once we know when that one's coming out. Um, and then <laughs> some more favorites, uh, Gideon the Ninth. This book, I love this book. First of all, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I just love this series in general. It's about necromancers. It turns into a murder mystery in space. It's a lot of fun, but you have to use a lot of brain power. And then I've got my, um, A Song of Ice and Fire series, which is something else that I would love to reread but I'm going to wait until if and when <laughs> Winds of Winter is announced as a release date um, because I, I, I really want to reread them, but I also don't want to reread them too soon <laughs> and then have to reread them again um, before Winds of Winter. Um, but moving down, we've got my Lee Bardugo books. I've got the collection of short stories and then Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. I think I was just cutting this off and then you can see my kids' toys. <laughs> um, I've got the Priory of the Orange Tree um, and then Nevernight series. I absolutely adore this series. I love this series. I love Mia. I love the writing. This is one of my favorite series of all time. I've got the UK editions. I've got the US editions. Um, I've got the beautiful sprayed edges. For Dark Dawn, they're just, they're so great. I didn't, <laughs> the series didn't end how I wanted it to, but I, I, I still love it. A whole special place in my heart. All right, you also probably see this stuff in some of my videos. See my reflection. Um, I've got some Deathly Hollows artwork. Um, I've got the illustrated Harry Potter, the whole box set of the hardcovers, and just... I don't know if I have to say this, but like I don't align with JK Rowling on her beliefs and things. I'm not even gonna mention, like I'm not even gonna, gonna get into it. Just, I love Harry Potter, not her. Um, I've got my Borders basket that has some books in it and like dust jackets of books that people are borrowing. Um, these are books that I would like to read soon, but you never know. I've got another book, The Month Club, Secret History. Um, this is basically where I keep all my bookmarks, one of my favorites from A Stranger Dream, this one as well, um, and then all my tabs and like sticky notes and whatnot, um, and then a bunch of library books I keep sitting here, or books that I'm about to read soon, um, and then they just sit on top of this cool little radio, um, and then down here, last thing I'm going to show you, because I've got a child that needs me are just all these really old books that I collect and just people just give them to me all the time. And that is my cue to go.